proud member of the Hyde Park Community Circle. I want to honor folks in the room who are from that circle. Judy Clark and Jeff Henderson have been formative and making this meeting happen, publicizing it on Front Porch Forum, which is maybe where some of you all heard about it. Um, so we wanted to kick off the night. Essentially, the purpose of this meeting is to talk about the future of Hyde Park Community Circle, which was founded to foster a sense of community in Hyde Park as we're thinking about some transitions coming up and the sustainability or lack thereof, frankly, of our work, um, knowing that there's so many other people in Hyde Park focused on deepening that sense of community, working in their own lanes um, to create those sense of community connections and trying to start a conversation. We'll see how far we get tonight. This may be one of, of several. Um, and sorry, guys, I knew <laughs> as I, your, my bag is to you. Wanting to start a conversation about how we might think creatively about working together. Again, just knowing there's so many folks who are bringing their own passion um, to this shared goal of, of deepening our sense of connection and community in Hyde Park. So that's our goal for this conversation. And we have what we hope will be a productive structure for engaging in that conversation. And to get us started, um, we'd love to just go around and have you tell us who you are and maybe what hat you're wearing. So there may be an organization that you're, is sort of front of mind for you this evening. It could be the school, it could be another um, organization, it could be a business, um, if you're in business here in Hyde Park. So sort of what lens you're bringing to this conversation. We'll try to do that pretty quickly so that we can really get to the meat of the matter. But that's where we'll start, where we'll start if that works for folks. Hi, Liz. <laughs> Liz is here. We can now begin. Okay, would you like to kick us off? Sure. And that's just for the recording. Okay. Yeah. I'm Olena Smith Harlan. I'm here as a Hyde Park person, but also a Lamoille Neighbors person. I'm Valerie Valcor. I'm a public health nurse, and I am here for um, health and wellness. Uh, Bob Melbourne. I'm uh, currently the chair of the Planning Commission, and. Um, this is the second meeting I was at this week with more than 20 people in it. <laughs> Maxine Adams, and I'm a resident in Hyde Park. And I'm Wiffy Brooks, and I just moved back here after having been gone for 25 years, and um, I'm an interested community member. I'm Jen Burton, and I live in Johnson, but um, for whatever reason, I bought the Odd Fellows Hall in, in Hyde Park, so um, that's why I'm here. Um, I'm Ricky French, and I'm a citizen as well as chair of the village trustees in Hyde Park. I'm Ryan Nolan. I'm with the fire department and a member of the Hyde Park town. Carol Young, and a resident of Hyde Park and member of the uh, Second Congregational Church in town. John Henderson, member of the Second Congregational Church in town and Hyde Park resident. Deb Henderson, uh, Hyde Park Community Circle, and also a member of the church. <laughs> Judy Clark, Hyde Park Community Circle, and well, I'm a member of that church too. <laughs> John Clark, ditto. We all hang out together. <laughs> okay, we'll go back. I'm Greg Paws, a Hyde Park community member, local architect, and I've been on different community boards for 30 years. Mary Waltz, and Hyde Park resident. Ann Fano, uh, slightly new, almost three years, Hyde Park resident. Carol Fano, uh, Hyde Park resident as well. I'm Liz Courtney, I'm a North Hyde Park resident been here for about three years, and I'm also on the Gaihan Valley Hall Committee, which is the committee that's taken over the Grange Hall in North Hyde Park and is working on turning it into a community center for all of you. I'm Michelle Bailey. I'm a resident of Hyde Park. I live in the village, and I was also, um, I helped with uh, some of the Better Connections projects last summer and fall with the history tour and um, the unicorns that occasionally pop up from time to time. <laughs> I'm Jennifer Fowler. I'm a Hyde Park resident. And we have Serene Country Cabins. Craig Fowler and co-owner of Serene Country Cabins. I'm also on the development review board here in Hyde Park. Uh, Susan Bartlett, live in Hyde Park, and I'm the chair of the select board. Roger Adet, I live in North Hyde Park. I'm a member of the select board. 
Amy Olson, I am the director of the Lanford Memorial Library. Marie Olson, I live in North Hyde Park, and I'm from Hyde Park, and I'm here representing partners in education through the elementary school. I'm Mariana Donnelly. I also live in Hyde Park, right in the village, and um, I'm also here with partners in education for the elementary school. I am Barbara Potter, Hyde Park resident, as a child and then came back, not, not ever intending to do so, but here I am. And I'm also a, a member of the Hyde Park Village Improvement Association. I'm Sue Moore, a Hyde Park resident, and I have been doing the tea tent uh, the fall home days for many years. And um, I'm also representing Lamoille neighbors. I'm Mike Wickenden. I'm a Hyde Park resident and uh, an active participant in many of the Hyde Park Community Circle events and uh, certainly would like to support and see them continue on into the future. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jack Anderson and I had to write down what I do so I wouldn't forget. <laughs> uh, I'm a village trustee, a Community Circle member, a longtime resident, a mentor at the Hyde Park Elementary School, and Barbara had reminded me that I'm also on the Village Improvement Association, so there, good. I'm Jenna Decker, I'm the owner of Fork and Gavel. Ron Rochensky, town administrator. I'm Diane Slahetka, I'm the president of the Friends of Lanford Memorial Library. Um, pretty active in that organization, so uh, that's enough. <laughs> Hi, I'm Fran Aranovici, and I'm on the board of the library. <laughs> Charlie Aranovici, I'm a village trustee, I'm, among other things. <laughs> Hi, Marilyn. You want to say hello to everyone? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us who you are and sort of what hat you have on this evening. I am Marilyn Zofar, and I have been part of the Hyde Park Community Circle since it began. I... Institutional knowledge. Okay, thanks, everybody. I'm guessing a lot of folks in the room know each other, which is great, too. But for anybody who's relatively new um, to the community, it's nice to just kind of connect a face with a name. And what we thought we would do next, and I'm going to let Judy kick it off, um, is in order to get to the point where we can maybe think creatively and brainstorm some ways that we can work together, again, with what we assume is a shared goal and commitment to deepening community connection in Hyde Park, we thought so many folks named uh, really important groups that exist here in Hyde Park, um, whether it's the Village Improvement Society, the Fire Department, uh, Better Connections, the group that's working to uh, renovate the Gaihan the Grange Hall, we thought it might be helpful to hear for some, from some folks who might be willing to represent those groups and just tell us, um, we have a large crowd, so we maybe just two or three minutes, but sort of a summary of thinking about PI, sort of what it is that, that your group stands for, what it is that you're trying to accomplish, and just try to get like a high level overview of some of either groups or um, you know, individuals in the room so that we can then have that sort of shared understanding of who does what, and then we can transition into thinking about ways that we might be able to collaborate. But I'm gonna let Judy kick it off because she's gonna give us a little bit of history on the Hyde Park Community Circle and explain the purpose of that group because that's a lot of what brought us here today is thinking about transitions in that group and how we might be able to create some new connections with other entities to keep that work moving. So with that, Judy. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. Um, yeah, so that's interesting. How many, how many people here were part of the High Park Community Circle since its inception in 1999? When it started in 1999, Carol, you actually you were. Yeah, in the beginning, yeah. Um, and so I'm going to read the intention. Um, and I think you pretty much know why we're here. <laughs> but the Hyde Park Community Circle is called for Hyde Park residents and friends who are interested in building community together. 
The circle is called so that people can think and act creatively together, providing ongoing support in a cooperative spirit. So over the years, we, you know, with um, keeping that intention in mind, we started organizing the four events. So, and I think pretty much people know it, but in the spring, we did Think Spring Puppets and Plants, uh, in the summer, Jedediah Hyde Ice Cream Social, in the fall, the Hyde Park Home Day, and in the uh, winter, the December 1 Hyde Park Lighting Ceremony. So, <clears throat> and again, a lot of people may know this, but we really um, were lacking manpower. <laughs> And so it was great for the lighting ceremony in the um, December. We did get wreaths and um, got the lights on them, got orders, and had the wreaths up in Hyde Park, in North Hyde Park. And Liz and, I don't know, some people along with her nicely took over the ceremony. And so we had a really nice ceremony in North Hyde Park. So we were able to, you know, continue and have the lighting ceremony. And so I'm not going to talk about it because they're here and Pi and um, Susan are working on the um, spring event, which I think probably the name has changed. So you guys can talk about that. And, but that's great because Pi came on board and we're able to do the spring event. But we'll be having ice cream social and, and home day, you know, that could probably be part of the discussion. Um, so, because of illness and members moving away and aging memberships, shall we say, um, we're no longer able to sustain these four events. So, as we're under the umbrella of the town, um, we came to the town and said, you know, what, what do we want to do about that? So, this is, this is the beginning of that, is to have this meeting and with interested people getting together and looking at Hyde Park and where we want to go forward with, um, you know, community development in, in Hyde Park. Um, anyway, I'm excited to see everybody here. This is pretty, a pretty exciting evening, so thank you all for being here. Are there more others here? Anyone have any questions for Judy about the community circle, activities, history, anything about that people wanted to ask questions well, of? sound different oh gotcha okay I I just want to say a few of us raised our hands but uh, for memory's sake I just uh, lovingly remember that Corella Gray and Olney Gilmore were also founding members I I'm sure I'm missing people but those two people um, were part of it yes yes I consider him still part of it. Yes. Yeah. So that's a little sort of snapshot of the community circle, why we exist, what we have done historically. Are any of the other groups that folks represent in the room willing to kick off just a little bit of sharing about why your group exists or you know, if you're sort of individually engaged in an activity, what that's about, um, how you feel it connects to fostering community in Hyde Park. And again, just trying to kind of get a sense of um, that shared foundation of understanding of what we're all working on. Michael. Just before we jump to that, I was wondering if someone could just talk about the Hyde Park Community Circle, the organization, like how do you meet, how, you know, how do you get together, what, what's, what has been the, uh, the process for you know, recruiting members and, and uh, deciding on programs, that sort of thing. Great question. Judy, do you want to tackle that one? Or Deb? Or... <laughs> well, um, we mostly focused meetings around the events. Um, in the last year or so, we did a little bit more about trying to have a regularly scheduled meeting, um, like a monthly meeting, but that didn't necessarily happen all the time. Um, again, most of the meetings were really to plan and schedule the events. They've been doing them for so many years that we have lots of good, <clears throat> excuse me, history, um, how-tos, task lists, and what we need to do each event. 
So that's still available should someone else want to pick up some of the events. Um, we have called for new members in a variety of ways through the years. Um, certainly word of mouth, certainly using Front Porch Forum, um, Facebook as well. Um, the newspaper, we've uh, used News and Citizen for um, announcing events and for calling for um, new members. And, you know, certainly the lighting ceremony, we uh, put out our form so people could request lights uh, through News and Citizen. We have an extensive database that, that Deb has. So for our events like Home Day, that's how you get contacted. <laughs> You know, if you've had anything to do with home day, you're, you're in the system. Um, but we also have, um, Deb has kept track of the orders for the lights, for the lighting ceremony. I was trying to think other, other things. But yeah, so it's a matter of um, what we've done over the years, is, as Deb says, when the event is coming up, and we often will try to have co-chairs for that, and um, and then have whole special meetings for the people that are working on it, and um, and then after the event we have an evaluation, um, getting ready for the next year. Did you have a question, Diane? Yeah, I just um, I, I'm relatively new in Hyde Park. It's I mean our house has been here for 16 years now, but in terms of getting to know you all over the last many years in various capacities. You have this whole tradition set. It's been many years. It's been, what, 20, 30 years that you've done this. To attract new interest, new blood, are there, uh, how did you come to these four events? And is it time to reconsider other events that other people might buy into that might be not the traditional four things that you've done or five things that you've done throughout the general, you know, this whole quarter century? Um, some of them, you know, certainly with your database, you, you can see how some are popular or not as popular. I just am curious to know how you came to these events and are the events open, and I'm not volunteering at this point, but are, are these events <laughs> open to new ideas, new events, new people that would bring in some energy in the next quarter century? <clears throat> Thank you, Diane. And if I don't answer everything, let me know. Um, OK, so we, we uh, formed in the first place because there were problems in Hyde Park. And a lot of people know that, but whoever doesn't know that, that's wonderful. Because over, <laughs> uh, over the years, we've hoped that people wouldn't remember that. Um, so yeah. So, and I think, you know, mo most people, when we put on the event, they don't think about that. We tried sort of meeting seriously at first. <laughs> so Diane's asking how that happened. And it, it sort of didn't work. So our inimitable, no, inimitable, Dan Young said, I think we should get together for fun. And so we had our first ice cream social. And we were surprised. I think there were over 50 people that attended. And so then over the years, we said, well, wouldn't it be nice if we have the four events so that there's one for each season? And Diane's right, I think, and we haven't me mentioned that yet, which I think has been an important thing because there were not traditional things going on in Hyde Park. And so I think over the years, you know, right, if you wanted to go to a 4th of July parade, you went to Morrisville or Cambridge or, you know, or wherever. Um, and so I think it's been important over the years for Hyde Park to have these traditions. Um, and, you know, we, we felt, <laughs> Diane, probably there weren't more than that because the four events were a lot to put on. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. But I will say that we know we've been struggling for a while. And I would say about every two years or so, we have this meeting to say, OK, what should we do differently? We did put out a survey to the Hyde Park citizens saying, 
what do you like? What ideas do you have? And we have brainstormed. And um, I can think of a couple of the things that we had thought. And I think that we absolutely have been open to ideas um, of other things, but just hasn't happened. And that's a great segue for Michael, yes. Yeah, I, it just, it sounds like, Marilyn, there's a difference between the, I thought the events that were all fairly popular. We had a good group at the ice cream social. We had a great group at the uh, one in the, in the um, fall. Those are the ones in the spring. I was there at the spring one. So, I mean, it seems like it isn't the question of the uh, events not being popular. It's, but what I hear is it's the, the effort to put them on. We need more resources to and, and more volunteers to help with that. Um, not that to say, to your point, that uh, you, know, you could um, ha have additional ones or have little variation on, on what we've done or what they've done, the Hyde Park Community Circle's done. But that it just doesn't seem to me that the problem is that the events don't lack uh, draw, that they are popular events and that they've done their purpose in terms of getting us together and talking and seeing who else lives in our community. And I, So maybe I'm blind, but I, I really think that they're a great uh, vehicle to build community spirit, the four that we have. Thanks for that, Michael. Um, the town has uh, recently just completed a, uh, a grant that was it took a, a year and a half going through the process that was called Better Connections. <clears throat> and um, we had a diverse group of people that sort of oversaw and worked with the grant. And, and part of it literally with connections is talking about roads and the uh, unsolvable issue of how you get from the high school and the junior high into the village without getting people run over. And um, you'll be glad to know we still don't have an answer to that, uh, <laughs> which really isn't a surprise to anybody that lives here. However, um, the, the better, with the better connections really was um, how do we, and again, being very aware of, of the community circle, but the goal of better connections to be how do we, how do we create the reputation in Hyde Park of being a family-friendly place. And that, um, and so going through that process, um, we all connected up with, and, and when we got to the end, and the report is uh, on the website, right, Ron? Uh, not, quite not quite yet, but there's, which is, which is, will be there, and there, and a lot of the little short things that they came up and suggested and what other communities have done, and so the, uh, the history walk that uh, the Bailey's had some stuff, we, and that's like, well, there's no doubt that we want to do that again, um, and, and to expand that, um, the, the doing the chalk things, uh, just a whole variety of things with when Community Circle needed some more volunteers for, because we were tapping into a different group of volunteers for the ice cream social group. We said, oh, wait just a second, we can do that. And, and for the Better Connections grant, at the end is the next thing you have to do is hear all these lists and hear all these good ideas. And I know that the school had gotten, the elementary school had gotten going, okay, there's a great group going there again. Um, and uh, Judy called and, and was like, you know, and no, we're, we're just running out of steam because a number of us in this room are suffering from the same thing and it's called we're not as young as we used to be. Uh, and uh, <laughs> consequently, the energy that we have is probably not quite as much as we used to have. But, but uh, the task at the end of the Better Connections grant is to, is to form another group. So it's not the group that did that, but to form a group and to see how do we continue because we tapped it. We found some people that you wouldn't believe love drawing funny things on sidewalks. People, they said, as long as we never told people that they were having fun, they would continue to do it. So, so there's a lot of, as you can see just here, there's a lot of really good energy. When Judy came in and talked to me and said, well, let's talk to the select board, it's because, again, here's your... Here's your overarching group that frequently your insurance comes through. You're doing an event. It gets covered. Um, the Lamoille Neighbors is really going strong. So we thought this is, um, I know community circle is, you, 
maybe it's time to have a different name. You know, this is about maybe you just find out of all of these groups, you sort of come together with an overarching group that everybody does it and everybody can connect with everybody else's volunteers. Because again, I think we all know with volunteers, if you just say, oh, come and help me, it's not. But if you can say, can you come and scoop ice cream for two hours, you can get a lot of people to come. So as, as much the job is, is administratively having the people with the time and the energy and the structure to be able to put out those sorts of calls. I think between everybody, we probably got everybody in Hyde Park on a list somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> There would be no escaping us. That's right. You don't live here unless you're on someone's list. Well, and that was a great example. Thank you for modeling that, Susan. And, and to Michael's question, I think where the community circle has landed is that we don't necessarily want to engage in another recruitment effort, like come join the existing community circle because we need support. What we wanted to do is think differently about how we can leverage other relationships that we have with other groups. If the community writ large wants to continue these annual activities or some version of them, like what new partnerships might we be able to forge to keep those activities going versus recruiting pe people to the existing structure. The, the gigantic goal for the, with the better connections, the, yeah. the long-term goal would, would be that every month there would be one fun thing that families could do that didn't cost a lot of money. And one of, we started doing movies at the elementary school. You know, there are a lot of things that you can do. We got into, ooh, you could do a summer and a month with croquet all over the village. Mm -hmm. Just a whole bunch of things like that that, that are different, but the, the goal being to be fun things for families that don't cost a lot of money. Nice. We're taking notes, right, ladies? We're writing that one down. <laughs> but that's a great example of, like, if we know Better Connections is committed to that, that's a structure maybe we could work with then. Are there other groups, and thanks again to Susan for modeling that, so this is Better Connections, this is what they sort of have as their goal. Any other groups want to share to put out there, or if other people have had thoughts that, have, that come to them in terms of possible collaborations that might exist? Yeah. So again, I'm Mariana Donnelly, um, and I've got my trusty sidekick, Marie, <laughs> here. And so the two of us have sort of reinvigorated um, PI, Partners in Education, that um, I guess has sort of uh, fizzled out slowly over the years. Um, and um, I sort of found myself. Uh, I, I fell into it begrudgingly. I've got a kindergartner and I was like, oh, some of these activities sound really great. And so I called up to see what was going on and they were like, yeah, we don't do those. We haven't done them in some years, but we really need somebody. And so I was like, <laughs> okay. Um, so then I grabbed Marie and I was like, if you do this with me, I'll do it. So here we are. And I think our overall mission is to build community um, with the school in mind as well. And, and part of why it's partners in education and not parents in education or um, a parent-teacher organization is because we, we feel like we'd really like to bring the community into the school and bring the school out into the community. We have so many folks who live here who are a wealth of information and have history here and know so much more than folks who have been here for 10 years can offer. And so I think we want to build a bridge in that. So I feel like a lot of our missions have been really similar to what the circle has been doing um, just with with the school in mind, we were thinking, you know, it's sort of the hub of the village. So having it, this place could be a welcoming um, building for people to come into and be involved in, whether you have children there or not, w was really our goal. So we're currently, I guess I should say, sorry, we are... Um, <laughs> We are taking on the puppet show this year. We are sort of putting it in with um, our fundraising event that we've historically had, which is um, Pie for Breakfast. And we have that happening. So instead of it being springtime, it happens um, on Pie Day, or as close to Pie, so uh, March 14th, which is a Saturday this year. So we were really excited to do pie for breakfast on pie day, sponsored by pie and the circle. <laughs> so we'll have the puppet show at the end of that for families. Um, and, um, and I think it's a really exciting opportunity to bring these, these worlds together. But it does take a little bit of, um, and what? We need pies. And we, we desperately need people <laughs> to make us delicious pies. So. Yeah, or buy them, bring them, donate them in whatever fashion. Um, 
So there, you know, there's a little finagling with some of these things. I think uh, because it's our fundraising event, we we need it to be a fundraiser to some extent. But we also welcome the idea of um, all of these event, events being open to everybody. So um, instead of doing a, a, a sort of entry fee, we'll do a suggested donation so that families who don't have the means can also be a part of it. And then we can be keeping with your mission as well as um, trying to, to move forward with, with ours. <laughs> um, so the Lanphier Memorial Library, I feel, has, uh, we serve every single person in the town of Hyde Park and also the surrounding towns, too, really. Um, so something that is part of our mission is actually in our mission statement is to foster a sense of community spirit. When we were redeveloping our um, policies years ago, we felt really strongly that that stays in our mission statement. I'll also say that one of my personal goals, I've been the librarian here for 16 years, and uh, one of my personal goals has always been to try to adapt and change our services to meet the needs of our community. So I've tried very hard to be involved in each of your organizations and meetings so that I can understand what the needs of our communities are so that the library can um, adapt and change. So that's my comment about it. And the library's been a huge part of home day with the activities for the kids. Um, yeah, Jack, and then John. Hi, um, I wanted to speak uh, generally about uh, what's going on in Hyde Park because I've been here for a long time and I've been involved in many, many different things and I think that that's what keeps Hyde Park and Vermont in general special because we have community. A lot of times when people come to Vermont, I ask them what they like the best about Vermont and they like community. And so I think that a lot of the things that are going on from the better connections, uh, from the school being renovated in Hyde Park, uh, for the Guion uh, folks uh, getting their, their building back in order again and being part of the community circle and so forth. Um, the history walk, I was ab uh, able to do some walking around with that. I enjoyed that as much as anybody else. Our town meeting and our village meeting, these are all things that are important to our community. Now I want to get to the point about I am a member of the community circle very low worker and setting up and taking down is my job but one of the th reasons we're here tonight is the community circle is in danger because we need people we need people to not volunteer for certain things and so forth but to be part of the committee and keep the community in the community circle i'd certainly not like to see the name cha name change because we all know what community circle is and what it means and so I want us all to think very hard about how we can keep community circle alive and well. Susan has uh, been willing to come forth and take a big leadership role, I think, in the, in the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the town, the thing in the summer morning, the parade, and so home day. And so I think that this, it's really critical and the fact that all of you are here tonight is just a wonderful thing. It just really feels like Vermont Hyde Park is very vital. Uh, there are a lot of different organizations that are here. And together, we really are a community, but we have to keep working at it. And we need to keep our focus on the community circle and putting our energies and ideas there. Thank you. Yeah, and you, you you name it. I mean, that's, I think, kind of what we wanted to talk about together is do we keep the community circle going and bring in new people and or are there partnership opportunities that might also enliven other groups by taking on some of these events? So it's a great, yeah. And so thank you for putting it out there. I think that's a lot of why we're all here. Yeah, go ahead, Liz. I'll just say a few words on behalf of the, oh, do you want to speak first? Um, I'm Liz Courtney again. Um, so I'm on the Gaihan Valley Hall Committee. And so just very quick background on that. Um, the committee came together very organically through people that either live immediately in North Hyde Park Village or nearby. Um, I think everyone 
joined the committee for various reasons, but we are all just excited by the Grange Hall building and the possibilities that it has for that neighborhood. Um, when I first moved here three years ago, I lived in Hyde Park Village and sort of got to experience what you know it's like to be able to walk around and visit with your neighbors, walk to the library. Um, and then I bought a house in North Hyde Park Village, which is a village but does not have sidewalks, does not have services and things that you can really walk around and, and enjoy. And it's been a lot harder to get to know your neighbors. You and I live next door to each other. I see you once every several months. <laughs> um, so I think I'm just, I'm, I'm on the committee because I'm excited about the possibilities for not just that building, but what it means for the neighborhood and how as the committee that's working on the old Grange Hall building, now we've called it the Gaihan Valley Hall, um, what that can mean for the entire extended community. Um, so we've already been working closely with the community circle, um, first as a participant on, in Home Day this year, which we thought was fantastic. We also combined our first open house event that we had at the Gaihan Valley Hall to be the immediate day after Home Day, so it was kind of an extension of that and um, a whole weekend-long celebration of Hyde, Greater Hyde Park. Um, and then we, as you mentioned, helped take over the uh, wreath lighting ceremony this year, which was great. It was another opportunity to invite people in to see the building. A lot of people haven't been inside the Grange Hall for ever or for many, many years. And we would be delighted to continue to do the wreath lighting ceremony and, and host that at, at the Grange Hall building. Um, and just you know be a, be, be a partner with you guys. I think we'll have to figure out the right balance of, of our participation. Our committee is spread very thin. We're just seven people right now. We're looking for more members <laughs> if anyone wants to get involved. Um, but that particular event just really makes sense for us because we were already had a wreath at the building. We have a space that we want to bring people into. So that's one piece of this whole puzzle that we're happy to continue to be a part of. All right, John, I'm coming for you. Sorry, friend. But that's a great example, too. Like, back to Jack's point, like, does the community circle continue to exist to run home day only? And then other groups sort of pick up some of the other events, possibly. So I'm John Henderson. I'm from Second Congregational Church and just want to let us know, let you all know, after four years of searching for a minister, we hired one Sunday. Um, a fantastic minister, um, a Reverend Dr. Wendy Jane Summers out of San Carlos, California. So she was here this past weekend and uh, both churches were sharing uh, her services with Johnson. United Church of Johnson and our church, Second Congregational Church. So um, she's very excited, loves the cold weather. Um, the weekend didn't throw her a bit. She was supposed to be here Saturday morning and she, or Friday morning, Friday morning and she didn't get here till Saturday night late, but uh, didn't throw her a bit and we're very excited. But talking about community outreach, um, when you hear a church doing missions, first thing that comes to my mind, oh, where are you over there? Where are you in uh, overseas? But our church does some of that, but the amount of work that our mission committee does here um, is tremendous. And if you hear of concerts going on at our church, you should come. If you hear of the community breakfast first Saturday of every morning, you should come. Um, we, we do a lot of that. And, and we do that, and it's, it's not for free. You, we ask for a donation, and our missions um, group splits the money, or Many times, all the money goes to restorative justice. It goes to Laraway. It goes to the Family Center, Heartbeat in Hardwick. Um, and so it, the mission is local. It's a, most of it comes local and stays right here. So we hope you'll attend our events because um, we do reach out a lot to the community. We're part of the home days, and uh, most of the people serving uh, are members of Second Congregational Church, serving on the board, serving ice creams, help setting up, tearing down tents and, and all that. So uh, we're very excited about our new opportunity in our church. Thank you. Thanks, John. Any other groups want to share? I think I saw John and then, okay. Yeah, continuing on the church thing, I'll just tell you, because uh, we've been talking about events happening and we have some coming up April 14th. Uh, there will be a potluck followed by the Big Steel or Borrow Bluegrass concert. And on September 9th, we have Village Harmony concert coming in. So there's some events that the community can participate in. And we'll also are planning an event to raise money for a charity, but we haven't 
named the charity or the time yet, probably be in the fall. And um, it, it's it, packed. It's packed. Concert, and they love the church because of the acoustics. They yeah. absolutely love playing here and singing. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, also, we have a commemorative brick walkway fundraiser going on, and people are interested in some of their ancestors that were connected with the church or something. You can buy a brick and have their name engraved in it or whatever message you want. And so that's something if you want to inquire with me or John Henderson about. Um, if we do have to change the name, we could become the uh, community squares. <laughs> well, anyway, with that, I, I, I yield my time. Anytime John has a microphone, I'm waiting for the joke. It will, it will come eventually. Thank you for that. I'm coming behind you. Um, I, I came because I, I just sort of want to introduce myself and I know you all know about the building, I assume, but, um, yeah, Marilyn was my realtor. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I have mixed feelings today, but, um, it's okay. It's, it's like this. It's really good. I love it. I really do love it. Um, I, I, I'm trying to make the upstairs be a mixed use space that's available to the community um, in any way that the community wants to use it, really. Um, right now, I'm waiting for a building permit. Um, I'm trying to make it so that the whole space can be used or parts of the space can be used. I'm also trying to create an income stream for myself. So part of it will hopefully be airbnb -able. But I'm trying to do the Airbnb so that it can be other things as well, because that is a coming and going kind of thing, not a fixed thing. What? State what building you're talking about. I did earlier. I introduced oh, okay. myself. Oh, okay. Oddfellows okay. Hall. I'm sorry. Oddfellows Hall. Oddfellows Hall. I'm so sorry. I the 4,800 square foot building. <laughs> <laughs> that needs to be painted, um, <laughs> among other things. Anyway, um, oh, speaking of which, church folks, I found a, I got a great quote on painting. I've heard that you guys need to have your building painted as well, so I have a great person, hopefully great. Great price. We'll see. Um, anyway, so I just want to put it out there. If anybody has any ideas or ways that they want to use it, um, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, one of the things I've thought of is to do sort of a community Thanksgiving for people who need a place to go for Thanksgiving, who don't have a place. I, I reached out to the community center, is that what it's called, um, this year, but they were, nope, the the sh warming shelter. Lamoille, Lamoille. Community, what, yeah, whatever, sorry. I reached out this year, but they were all set for dinner. I might try to do that depending on how things go. Um, <laughs> earlier this year, but um, things like that I'm totally interested in and hoping that you all will have some ideas and want to make use of it as well. Um, you know, the thing is, there's not a lot of work. All I am trying to do is make a bathroom have a shower, basically, but to do that is a lot, as it turns out, which I learned after I started. Um, <laughs> Which is fine. It's there's a lot of learning going on, but it's it's all fine. But it, it has to, even though it is up a very large flight of stairs, it has to be ADA accessible. This bathroom, which entails making it bigger than I wanted, um, getting this building permit that requires just a small hurdles. But they feel large when you don't know what you're doing. Um, I live in Johnson. You know, there's no zoning, and I don't previously haven't dealt with. Uh, this large of a building with multiple units, which changes everything. So I'm learning, but it's it's good. I do love it. I, um, <laughs> Thank you. I just I just want to share. Marilyn knows this that I removed uh, 1.82 tons of plaster um, from the ceiling upstairs. So that was that was actually fun. Um, it was very. 
And Ron's here if you have any zoning questions. But this is great. We have two. Oh, it's the state. We have two new spaces, though, that are under development for like community events, which is great. Yes. Barb Potter here. And for those of you who know the Hyde Park history better than me, just correct me. But um, back in 1910, there was a great fire in the village of Hyde Park. It started at the jailhouse. A couple of the, we used to call them jailbirds back then. And um, they were cold. And so they started a little fire in their cell and then it got carried away. All the buildings were um, made of wood. And now we have br brick buildings. So anyway, the fire uh, went right down through town a great long way, except you notice the governor's house still stands. And I've been told that an undue amount of water was spent upon the governor's house. And <laughs> you'll notice we have a second congregational church because that the church burned. So after that, the the water system was put in in town. And also, they formed the Hyde Park Village Improvement Association, which is open to anybody uh, who lives in Hyde Park and has their own home that they live in, uh, according to the bylaws. So mostly what we do is beautify the town. There are a couple of ladies that are really good at putting the flowers out in the barrels. And uh, I take care of, on, on my property, I have 312 feet of sidewalk, so I'm the one that clips the grass there. Um, and we also make donations to uh, some groups. I know we've given, given to the library, I think the mentorship program maybe, and they're, cool. yeah. 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 And our funding is from, uh, stocks and bonds from way back when. Uh, so if you don't spend more than you get, you you do pretty well over the years. <laughs> and some years we spend more and sometimes we spend less. Yeah. Oh, and if anybody lives in town and just get in touch with uh, Duncan Tingle about uh, joining, because it took Elsa French about five years to get me to come. <laughs> Thank you for that. Before we transition into brainstorming, any other groups that want to share a bit about what they do? I think I saw three over here. One, two, three. I'll just say a little bit about Lamoille Neighbors. There's three of us from the board here, um, Maxine and Sue, and several members of Lamoille Neighbors. We're kind of at the other end from you all. Uh, it's a membership, nonprofit membership organization for people 50 and over, and we have a very modest goal of trying to change the culture of aging. <laughs> and our idea is that we will try to help people who want to stay in their own homes stay there as long as possible by getting people engaged in social things, educational things, cultural things, providing volunteers to help people have rides or friendly visits or a call to if people are lonely, um, that kind of thing, vetted providers. Mm. Other things I should put, put, uh, on, events. put on events. And we're having Bill McKibben, March 12th. That's open to everybody at the Tech Center. Hmm? Free. Yes, free. Yeah, gardening. Yes, yeah, among volunteer things, yeah. And you sort of think you're never going to need it yourself, and then you find out you do, right, Pixie? <laughs> yeah, so that's what, that's what we do. And we're really, it's, we're, we're not only in Hyde Park, but we started in Hyde Park. And I think everybody on the board is from Hyde Park. Uh, but we're Hyde Park, Morrisville, Johnson, so, so a little bit Johnson, a little bit, so, yeah. So uh, this end of Lamoille County. And uh, we do have a lot of volunteers. We have about, we have almost 50, maybe 46 volunteers and about 50 members yeah. now. And we, it's not even a year we've, since we started. So we're pretty excited about it. Just briefly, so I'm a resident of, of Hyde Park as well. Um, I live at Ebenezer Place, um, and there's about 14 homes there. And um, so we've been talking a lot about the village, but it made me think about um, my little neighborhood. And um, last year, I organized a, a, a block party mm -hmm. for my neighborhood. And um, 
not everyone was able to attend, but um, it was an opportunity to just to get to know the little group that's in that section. Um, but I also wanted to say, and I hope some of you know this, but about last about a year ago, the select board approved a policy, a healthy community policy for Hyde Park. Um, and so that's sort of a starting point to setting a culture, a tone for Hyde Park as being a healthy place to live. Um, and um, so I think just building on that and thinking about other funding sources and, and other opportunities that that can bring. Um, and it made me think about um, Newport is the only city in Vermont that's an age-friendly city. Um, and so maybe Hyde Park could be the second. Friendly. It's an um, AARP um, um, program, if you will, and it enables more grants. And it also it just recognizes your community as you know, and age friendly. Thank you for sharing, Diane. Yeah. Just wanted to talk a little bit about the Friends of Lanphier Library. We kind of uh, got together about six years ago now, um, and. It's been uh, slowly rolling forward with uh, more and more people involved. But as everyone knows, it's difficult to you know get people involved. Everyone's so busy uh, working. Two people in each family are usually working, and or have they have school children? They're busy with their kids. So there's the volunteering piece um, is thin, and I think everyone in this room experiences the fact that. Um, that they're always looking for new people to help out, um, to to help grow their organizations, to um, just you know have not always the same people doing the same things over and over. You see all the same faces in the room. So, anyways, we or organized ourselves six years ago because we realized um, that I think more and more today in our various communities that the library is really the heart of every village and every town and. The library that we knew the library to be, um, giving my age away, was not the same library that we have today. It's really almost like a, a provides social services. It provides um, technical support. It provides enrichment. It provides um, child care sometimes in different you know programs that, that that are held for the library. So we felt that it was important to have a group that kind of as an adjunct to all the wonderful things that libraries do. So our, our mission was to um, kind of help um, support the idea of freedom of reading because reading is knowledge. And, and in this world today, the more people that can get an education and increase their knowledge base, I think is critical to society in general. Um, and so we try to do that um, through advocacy, volunteerism, uh, fundraising, trying to create partnerships, which we have, um, and increasing the library's role uh, in the Hyde Park community. So that's really the heart of our mission. And to achieve that um, is always the bottom line. It's always like, okay, so we can raise a few dollars here, a few dollars there to promote various programs for the library to by the little sweet things that the library might need that might enhance the functionality of the library. So in, in that spirit, we try to do giving back, like uh, we run a series of speakers um, so that we have six sessions a year, three in the spring and three in the fall. These are all free. Most of our speakers come to us and volunteer their time and their expertise to whatever topic um, is chosen for that particular month. Um, we have anything from gardening to um, Vermont humanities programs to we're, ha we're having like fly fishing and we're having, we're trying, we try to do a diverse subject group so that everyone might have something of interest that they might want to come for. Um, we have uh, various, like we just had this past weekend, uh, another community program where we had a family snowshoe event where one of um, the people who's very much an avid naturalist, uh, Sheila Goss, some of you, who are, if you're on the Green River, if you're, if you're on the uh, um, Green River Reservoir or the Waterbury Board, anyway, she's very active outdoors, and so she helps lead our snowshoe group. And so this past Sunday, we had 17 people 
from six months old to 70 years old come to the snowshoe. And that was just kind of like, let's get together, let's walk in the woods, let's look what we can find, and let's have a little cookies and hot chocolate afterwards, which is great. Um, we had, you know, the library needed a few things, so we ran a chair campaign um, where, similar to the bricks at the church, we had bl brass plaques that we, um, person bought a chair, put, they could put a saying on the chair, whatever they wanted. And so we got the need for the chairs taken care of and that kind of a fundraiser. Um, we're our, we have a, an annual huge gala once a year so that we can kind of bring up the bank account to be able to disperse all those funds throughout the year. And that's coming up uh, at the end of April. It's going to be a theme on Arbor Day and Earth Day. And so we're rooting for our library. That's the theme this year. Uh, we're, we're kicking that off by having a tree, a live tree sale, uh, which started today. And it's a, in partnership, again, as we talk about partners in the community, it's the Lamoille Conservation with Peter Danforth. He and I met together with some of our committee members, and we've um, agreed to share a, a sale on, on bald, rooted trees that you can buy for your gardens for the spring as part of the kickoff for this whole theme of earth and rooting. And we're gonna try to get some of the school kids to participate by doing leaves and that kind of, you know, there's just a whole group of things going on. So we, um, we're small, we're probably, we have barely our board of four people. Um, plus we have two members at large and a few people that pop in and out. So we try to do a lot with a few people. We partner with Community Circle because we have a table at the Ice Cream Social and we have a table at Home Day, which we feel is important um, to be part of their community efforts as well as showing people what other opportunities are available within the community. So that's kind of us. Um, so check in. We have a web page. Uh, Amy is partnered with us so that we can get some of the activities on the library web page as well as our own. We're building our page slowly. Um, so anyways, any questions, let me know. Thank you. I think doing a lot with a very few people is a tagline for many of our groups. I like that. And of course, in that all that, I forgot how many times we've partnered with you, you know, <laughs> including Bill McKibben is a partnership with Memorial with the library, oh, yeah. the library, yes. Well, many library. things are partnerships with the libraries. Thank you all for sharing. I don't know if any of that was new to some folks. Some of it was new to me, just to kind of have a sense of the constellation of groups that are active in the community. Um, I kind of wanted to transition. We're right at the hour. We have another half hour. Totally understand if, if folks need to, to shove off. But we wanted to also create space for some open brainstorming. And some folks have already done it already, sort of throwing out ideas. Um, so I wanted to kind of pivot. Anybody back here wanted to say anything, too? I feel like I'm forgetting about our our folks in the back. Any other groups that wanted to share that didn't have a chance to before we move forward? Did you want to say something, Greg? No. Okay. Um, so yeah, I wanted to kind of open the floor to, you know, as you heard people share, were there things that came to mind? Like, wow, maybe next year we could partner with the friends to do a snowshoe. I don't know, I'm just making something up. But, you know, and I think back to Jack's point earlier, like your passion for like, let's keep the community circle going. Are there others that have opinions about, yes, we should keep the community circle going? but look for more partnerships? Are there, uh, are there folks who feel like, well, maybe the community circle is, is ready to dissolve and what we should do instead is commit as a community to these certain types of activities. We heard better connections once a month. Is that the vehicle? So kind of opening it up for people to reflect on what they heard and not that we'll make any decisions tonight, but just to kind of capture people's perspectives that we can then think about carrying forward in some future conversations. Amy, were you gonna say something? Some of the things that I've been thinking about with Hyde Park Community Circle over the past few years, knowing the struggles that have been in getting people involved and the fizzling out of the energy. And I think that the four traditional events are important. And as you said, Michael, incredibly popular, not just in Hyde Park either. We have people from all over the county who look forward to those events every year. And... Um, so somehow finding a balance between the tradition and allowing for change. And I think that's really important because um, if we want to, I, I go to, 
I go to Ten Ben's Brewery every once in a while, and that's in Hyde Park, and I don't know anybody who walks through the door there. So I feel like everywhere I go, I know people from Hyde Park, but but how do we get those people in and involved a little bit more? They're coming to our town every week, and I'm not there every week, but I, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I support that. <laughs> anyway, um, so just kind of balancing this idea of, of keeping with these traditions and also just opening up the door to let some new ideas and new change come into those. Thanks, Amy. Uh, I had prepared about this because I think Judy had asked us a long time ago at one of our meetings uh, what, we, what we thought we ought to do. And I said, if we can't find the leadership for the uh, home day, we should cancel it. And, and, and uh, I, I think that's not a, a really good option, but I understand Susan's going to take charge of that. I think if we... <laughs> I don't, <laughs> she, did she just give me a dirty look? I, I, I think that what's happened is the leadership for Community Circle has fallen on very few people. And I think my proposal at the time when Judy had asked about that was to divvy it up. And it seems like it's in transition right now. So part of the thing is Pi is looking at taking over the spring thing and looking at it as a way that's beneficial for them. Uh, it seems like that it might be a good thing that the Guion folks would be looking at the Christmas lighting thing. And uh, so that they're, uh, what's the one I'm missing that we need to follow in the ice cream social? Is that maybe there's another group can take care of that. So we're not relying on just a very few people to do the entire thing and burning them out and so forth, but it's being divided up and so forth and any other support that we can get from any other communities that would like to take over, for example, the ice cream social and so forth, because they're very important. And I think the leadership that we've seen from uh, the, the hard core of the um, community circle is that they've, they've done more than their share and they're willing to turn their leadership and all the glory that goes along with it to someone else. <laughs> And the t-shirts, I guess. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Well, um, for work, I am a social worker, and I am the SASH coordinator in Lamoille. So I, my mission is to um, keep people living in their homes, if that is where they choose to age. And I have an idea for Jen for her space <laughs> in your town. Uh, they all eat their Meals on Wheels together on a certain day, seniors, and they are able to come there and play games and cards and such like. Um, no, it's in the town hall. The, the town hall has a, um, a little senior room, has a senior room. And um, so a lot of people here in Hyde Park wouldn't travel to Morrisville because um, the the Civic Center, where, where Meals on Wheels is now, has uh, very little parking. It's hard to get into the building. And um, I think that decentralizing is maybe a good idea, because then people get together and they create their own. They're pretty creative, too, in Johnson, about creating what they want to do and how they want to act together. So yeah, still thought. Yeah, no, I like it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great brainstorming. Yeah, and Let's think outside the box. Any other ideas, Diane? Is there any way to have an open house for your building so that yeah, people could see it's, what it's, it's like to wait a couple months out? Okay. But I definitely will. I, I Maybe during home day. I think, um, oh. I think some of the people running for the legislature are going to do one of their um, cookie and whatever that thing is. Right. Meet there. Have people meet there. Cool. Meet free. Yes. And that will be an opportunity for them as well. Yeah, I just. I, it's um, interesting because I got excited before the meeting tonight because there were quite a few people who said they were going to be here. And then on the way down, I went, oh, I think most of those are my age. <laughs> you know, those people that I know that are going to be here. Then I got a little more excited as I came, or we were, I, you know, we were here getting ready to set up. And the first three people that came in, or four, were pretty young. I mean, you know, it's all a matter of perspective, I guess. But anyway, I, I felt like they were pretty young. 
and so, you know, and the thing is, I'm, you know, I, um, I, I think about this ice cream social and home day because, you know, as we're, we're, our committee was saying, we, you know, we just can't do it another year. We can't pull that off. And then, and then people say, but you got to do it. <laughs> you know, we, we got to have it, you know. So anyway, I would like to like, you know, say to these younger people that are here, you know, I think these things can happen. And I think they do touch a lot of lives. Um, you know, ice cream social, I don't want to say it, that isn't maybe spread out so much or whatever, but there's just so many people who come and enjoy it and enjoy the camaraderie, you know, sure, the ice cream too. But I think of home day and, you know, how much that touches other lives of people in Hyde Park. And I feel like we've pretty much done what we wanted to do, our intention, and that was to let the rest of the community know, you know, who we are in Hyde Park and what we have to offer. And it's really interesting, you know, you sometimes think, well, we don't have that many businesses or whatever in Hyde Park or organizations. And then you get the list and there's quite a few there. But anyway, I think, you know, some of these things can continue, you know, if people feel ice cream social and home day, they hate to not see them. Um, but I think we need the younger, as we've been saying tonight. So. I put it out to you guys that I feel are younger. Michelle, you too. <laughs> um, you know, is there some way, you know, that we can get younger people on board? You know, if you want, and as I think Jack maybe alluded to, maybe other people, you know, that there's other organizations in town that, you know, want to actually get on board, you know, and help help with that and put it on. And, and then there are the, all these other, you know, things that can go on that people have been talking about. But I think that's maybe what we want to get some feedback on, you know, kind of from the town, you know, how to go forward. Having moved back here and having been here since the end of June, um, I've been asked to serve on a lot of different <laughs> committees for a lot of different organizations. Um, and I think that's true of a lot of us in this room. There is so much more going on here than there was 25 years ago when I left. And I think one of the things that would be really important is to have someone or some group that can kind of coordinate and oversee all the different activities. So we're not having five things all at once at the same day or you know we've got 25 people who volunteered to do ice cream and then there's nobody to follow up and make sure that they're going to come i think that um it just is important to have s something someone some group that's going to serve as a coordinator whatever we do yes Oh, did you have something to say too? Ricky? Okay, so Ricky and then I'm going to come back. So hold that thought. I don't know if what I have to say is too, um, I don't know if the word's relevant or not, but I, I guess as I'm listening to what everybody's been saying, my observations have been that um, it, starts off, it started off with one small group and, and individuals who got together, and it's kind of morphed into like all of these groups within the town now starting to think about how can we all do something together. So it's a big community kind of thing. But in addition to that, um, it's way outside of the community. And it needs, I think, what you were just saying, I'd add to that. And it, it just needs to be more thought more more well thought out and organized because it feels like you're morphing into something different. We're including a lot more people. People are getting to know each other, um, liking each other, wanting to do things together. Um, and it's almost becoming kind of the a regional kind of thing. I mean, people from Stowe come up here to Home Day. People from uh, Newport come down here to Home Day. You meet people at Home Day from all over the place. So um, I've just kind of observed that. And I think it could have a really big impact if you thought that way, thought a little bit, I don't know, 
it could just just think about it. And then the other thing that I was thinking about was um, economic development and um, what does all this mean for economic development? Because you've been bringing people in. We now have Fork and Gavel here. Um, you know, what, what is it that Hyde Park really wants? Every group has their own thing and it's almost, it overlaps beautifully. Um, but there might be a way to get other people to even come to a, a bigger meeting where we talk about visioning. I mean, I think we talked about that at the Better Connections grant. So what do, what do we want Hyde Park to look like in 50 years? You know, I won't be here, but um, <laughs> maybe we will be. But, but um, you know, what do we want it to look like? And that would be a really, really, really good way to get a lot of people involved. And you could do it, you know, maybe there's a grant that could be written where you could have the whole town, whoever wants to come, come and do a visioning exercise. So, I mean, it was sort of done at, through a little bit through the Better Connections grant, um, but it could be a really focused kind of thing. So, and I used to work in Morrisville, and um, this was probably 20 years ago, maybe, and Morrisville did a, um, did a, a visioning day, and a lot of people showed up, and a lot of long-lasting projects came out of that that really helped Morrisville to develop, so. Anyway. River Arts. Thanks for that. that. River Arts came out of the Visioning Day. Well, then these are great suggestions of things we could do next, so thank you, Ricky. Um, so two years ago, Susan and Ron sent me to a conference <laughs> that happened down at Castleton University, and it was the Vermont Council on Rural Development, and so they do something just like that. These They facilitate these visioning sessions for towns to help them figure out what is everybody in the community most excited about and can we pick like two or three things that we're going to work on and then decide who are the people that are going to do that. So there is a partner that can help make that happen. Um, yeah. And so one thing that when I was at that conference that I heard from was a group from Craftsbury that they went through that visioning process and came up with several initiatives. And one of the small things that they did that was really helpful was just creating a community calendar that lives on their town's website that just pulls in all of the things happening from all the different um, volunteer groups, but also maybe some of the for-profit groups that are in the community. So even something like a 10 Bens, if they were having events, could go on that calendar. And it was just tremendously helpful to have a centralized place that so everyone can have visibility into like, oh, there is actually a lot going on in our town. Like Bill McKibben's gonna be here next week and then I can go eat pie on Saturday and then I could go to 10 Bens and have a beer. So, you know, the trick is then who, do, who manages that calendar, who is the central person that, you know, helps take in all the information from all the groups, what is the system that we set up for that, but that could be just a, a small thing that could help connect a lot of dots, because what I'm hearing tonight is that, like, there's a lot of stuff going on, but we're not all talking to each other all the time. To be clear, I'm not volunteering necessarily to do that. <laughs> Yeah. Was there anybody else over here who wanted to speak? I think pretty much everything I was just thinking was said by a number of people, which is just that, you know, there are so many things going on in town. It just a little bit of simple coordination and having a central place that we could promote that to the community. And it may exist already. Forgive me if I'm, you know, missing something. But um, I think that there is a lot going on here and you know some things kept, we could infuse some new energy maybe or a few different things into home days but home days is wonderful so you know I think there's a lot we could do and um, the economic development piece I think we don't want to forget about our businesses in town and like when you guys hosted like burger night at the fork and gavel and the line was out the door the first night that I went I mean those kinds of things help our support our local businesses and really foster community too so I think we don't want to forget about them and maybe 10 Ben's and uh, the a, par a park uh, uh, no I <laughs> Uh, uh, no. <laughs> oh, I'm saying that only for personal reasons too. Thinking that you know, um, you know, some night a little beer garden outside of uh, you know something could be really fun. And and I know we're trying to be family friendly, but I think that there's a wide range of folks that we could attract and get involved. So those are some important things. I think we don't want to forget about our 
local businesses too. So, who is Amy? Do you want to speak? No, I always do, but I'm, I, I also think I have a lot of ideas running in my head from what everybody's been saying. But I also think that finding the balance between the family friendly and the you know the other things that can happen are really interesting. And I'm also you know to Judy's point, the young people in the room. But if we're talking about a community. We're talking about everybody, and Maxine's talking about the the agency that she works for, and the Lamoille neighbors are really well represented here and incredibly active in taking the community by storm. So it is is the whole community and not just the young people. And that's always the eternal question, right? How do we get more families involved and more people? And even for Hyde Park Partners in Education, that's a struggle for them. They don't have a hundred people and you know two hundred and fifty kids in the school. Um, so so. And then the community calendar idea, Liz, you've echoed pretty much something I've been thinking about too, but I think that really should be someone like the town, um, someone who's paid to kind of manage that and have some kind of pipeline. Or even if there's a shared Google calendar, some safe way for people to, to plug those in themselves so that it's not falling on one person's responsibility. And I know Front Porch Forum has that, but it's kind of hard to, it's not that, that easy to look at all the time, um, but I love Front Porch Forum too. And I had one more thing and I can't remember now what it is, hold on. We oh, um, I, <laughs> you can grab it, but I, I just, the library is thinking about, we're looking into um, creating a very purposeful, strategic long-term plan. We are very, very good at planning. We are very, very good at, at, at thinking about what we need and what we need to do to meet those goals, but really kind of this community aspiration portion of it so that we can do things like get a new sign and a logo and think about what our staff is gonna look like and how we're gonna design the space of the building and change that. So if that is something that, that not you, but what you mentioned, I know, everybody's waiting at me for 10 pence, so I'm starting with you, but no, the, um, that sort of piece, if I'm very interested if that is something that this town wants to do because then it kind of, the library doesn't have to do that itself, it could be part of the whole community because our, if our long-term strategic plan will be inviting different members of the community to share in that, that will be part of that process. So, I'm done. <laughs> so anyway, speaking of the town, and I just went over to speak to Ron and, and uh, We've just had a little chat here, and I and listening to, um, again, I was sitting here thinking, boy, what we need more than anything in the world right now is a calendar, because the the monthly events already exist. Okay, they really do, um, but but that is that's not a small task, um, but we're also again because we're a healthy community, and again through the town we can go looking for some money, um, you know, for grants that might help set it up. But we have. Um, I, I don't think it's a big stretch of the imagination to say that this is economic development, and we have some money in economic development. So let us sit down, and I'll work with Ron and a couple of people and see what we can come up with sort of for a proposal as how we develop a calendar, because there's, again, there's a lot of work doing that, but then a, a reasonable way for keeping it, um, for keeping it updated. Um, I think that'll, and and I think once everybody begins to see that, it's uh, you know maybe maybe what needs to happen to community circle is is it it needs to be a bigger circle, and and you know you say you want volunteers and stuff, but it's always different. And maybe part of this is like okay, here's everybody that's doing something. Can you create one big community circle group that has a people from all different things that come together and say okay and who's going to who's going to who's going to do the spring program who's going to do the re who's going to do oh who wants to help do movies who wants to do you know so that it's um, to really expand how we think of community circle right now community we're sort of like well here are these four things and we don't have enough just a second let's let's really make community circle a big thing and and uh, We'll work with with uh, with Ron and come up with a proposal, and I'm sure there must be some great email list out of this, and can ship it to people and say, okay, here's what we can do, here's where we can find the money, because um, I, I I think a well done calendar will go a long way in helping people. And again, once you see that, and I say with volunteers, it's always if there's something specific you ask people to volunteer for, you can get them to come. It's when it's too big in general that it's an issue. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, so we're going to do Jenna and then we'll come back up here and then we're almost out of time. So yeah. I want to, <laughs> we're going to need another meeting. And I'm coming back that, in that direction. Yeah. 
I was just going to say kind of as a unique perspective as a attempting for-profit business in town, <laughs> uh, not necessarily an organization. You know, Amy was like my first, I went to the library when I first came to town with a new business, like not even open. And I was like, Amy, who do I talk to? Like who, what organizations are in town? What are our partnership options? And she pointed me towards the community circle and I got engaged with those guys. But we now coming up on a year of in business, um, had no idea all these organizations were in town. Um, I think we've donated or partnered with all of y'all <laughs> at some point or tried to. Um, but from an economic development perspective, it would be really helpful for new businesses because we don't want to say no to the community, but also we're trying to keep our doors open and lights on <laughs> in our first year of business, um, which we're grateful for all of you coming in. Thank you. But that would be really, really helpful. And we want to participate. We want to volunteer and give time, money, or food, or pies. We'll talk to you um, if we can. Um, but that would be really helpful. And a community calendar, too, with Burger Night. Because, yeah, Burger Night was our way to, like, meet people who couldn't come during breakfast and lunch and be like, we're here. We're a restaurant. So, yeah. Really helpful perspective. Thanks, Jenna. Okay, Michelle? No, I, I don't remember who we raised her. Um, uh, just talking to Susan's point, and uh, Ron and I have talked about this briefly, but um, updating the town's website to a more, um, let's say, more modern, more recent uh, uh, WordPress uh, site could uh, have a little bit more interactivity so that uh, a calendar could certainly be included in that, um, making it so that updates are a more simple process so the, the town can can update things a little more easily and potentially other groups could could update things and and you know and and a calendar as well uh, to make getting information out there more easily and it's not that big a process, but um, I think that could help quite a bit. I was just a. Carol Fano. I volunteer with the town, but not representing an organization. I was just thinking about the coordination word. In, ter is in addition to communication and thinking that uh, there may be benefit in maybe one member from each group getting together every other month just to talk about what they're doing. And maybe it's a very coordinated thing that says the school, the pie group is going to have uh, you know September and the library is going to have October and, the, and so that we each have an assigned month that we're assigned whichever group we are, that activity, whatever it might be. And then we know there's once a month something. It can be a really small thing, hot chocolate on whatever, but um, it might benefit also a little, just a teeny bit of coordination might really go a long way. And I'm going to check the clock. So I think it's fitting we give Judy the last word here. And then unless there's anybody else that has something burning they want to put out there before we wrap up, Pixie, and then I'll close this out after you speak. Judy, go ahead. I'm not on any committee. And I've worked hard yes. to do <laughs> But I just want to say that from small seeds, huge things grow. And um, 20 years ago, Judy Clark had this idea because the village was in shreds. And um, the school had had a strike. And it was horrific. And Judy Clark had this idea that if we could put together a small circle and start to bring the sides together and just have people talking in the same room with something totally neutral and that we could begin to come up with ice cream. I mean, what could be less threatening than ice cream? <laughs> And I would say that there probably aren't a handful of people in this room that remember the shreds that this town was in. And it came from a couple of people saying, 
we are a community and we need to function as a community and we need to come together and to bring those four events that grew out of that tiny little seed and it is still the original people who were working so, except for some of us who made it, um, you know, that have worked so hard to make sure that those events exist. And, um, you know, look at the groups that are here tonight. This is just amazing to see all of the energy and the positive things and the new ideas and the bravery. <laughs> The, car the courage that you, you know, are taking on, it's really exciting. And yes, there, you know, a better website calendar and so forth is just fantastic. But I'm just thrilled to be sitting here and thinking back to that tiny little seed of an idea that has grown into, you know, this amazing thing. And just to give some accolades, I mean... Judy and John Clark, unbelievable. Carol and Dan Young. And, and to say, Amy. I mean, what Amy has done with that library and made it just this amazing, exactly. I mean, and so many of you in this room just. I'm always proud to say I live in Hyde Park. I kind of feel like we should stop there. That was a lovely. So, um, Mariana and then Judy. I just really briefly wanted to say that we um, we have put together a website that Pi has because the school website is not navigation navigatable. Is that a word? So, um, and and we have um, on that a calendar, and we've been trying to to grab the community events and find them to to advertise them on there. So you can go to the school website, find the little link for Pi, and get to our website that way. And you can email us. Um, and the list has our email on it. And let us know of any events you have going on. And then we can throw them on the calendar as well. So that's a way to get to families and let them know what's going on. Great, great. Thank you. Judy? Now so many things have been said. There's so many things I want to say that I can't remember them all. But yeah, uh, Ricky, I'm sorry she left, um, hit a chord with me in saying, you know, we, we've been morphing, <laughs> you know, and we continue morphing and that it, it's, you know, into, into greater things. And it, it's really exciting. Um, anyway, I, I just, I'm so excited about the idea of this visioning. It's so funny, Ricky said, well, I don't think I really have anything to say, <laughs> but <laughs> anyway. So, um, really, if people did not sign in, you know, sign in if you're interested in continuing the conversation. We figured, you know, tonight was probably the beginning, you know, not the end. Um, oh, this I knew. <laughs> um, oh, shoot, lost it. Um, I uh, know. See, I told you <laughs> to get off from here. Oh, I know. I knew, and it was important. <laughs> um, and this is brainstorming tonight. Remember this when I when I make this statement. But you know, we could maybe consider. Maybe we're getting ready to hire a coordinator. You know, you could right. You know, it's just we are. You know, growing and and it's exciting having all these you know, organizations and groups and all this stuff going on. Um, so it'd be nice to have maybe one person kind of <laughs> as the glue as we go forward. So the thing is, I think we need to, if people are interested and excited about that, you know, plan another time that we get together with people who are interested in this visioning and see where it goes. Way to wrap up. Let's do another round of applause for all of you for coming out. Just the number of people that showed up, the diversity of groups that you represent, the number of groups that exist, and like everyone's commitment to wanting to do more work together. 
Like, and we're all over committed anyway, and yet everyone's signing up to take on more. But I mean, the themes I heard were coordination, right? Like everyone in the room is working towards the same aim. How can we work better together and represent our coordination to the public by having something like a shared calendar? And then maybe having a visioning event to really pull this together in a concrete plan for moving forward. So that sounds like a good next step to me is we can circle back to anyone who provided an email and maybe try to think about taking some of the ideas tonight into a future conversation to see where it takes us. Jack. Oh, right involved. here. Yeah, we have notes. <laughs> yeah. And I think that'll be maybe the community circle. We can, I'm volunteering us, which is a dangerous thing to do, but maybe we can try to synthesize the meeting this evening and some of the ideas that were generated, circulate that out, and probably set another meeting to see which of those we want to move forward, if that works for folks. Um, so again, this is like exciting, right? It's like feels so good to be a part of this community and all these people that are willing to give up a Wednesday evening. In addition to all the other, I saw Amy last night at the library board meeting, right? Like how many evenings do you all give up for your various organizations and then to layer this on? So, and sorry people that haven't seen anything but the back of my head. And I thank you guys. Thank you all for being here and look for an email for even more opportunities for you to donate your time <laughs> to your community. <laughs>